KP's video news, y'all. It's KP's video news, y'all. It's KP's video news, y'all. It's KP's video news, y'all. Okay, got past that. Man, you just don't know. Dealing with computers, 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 man. Everything we have nowadays is electronic, man. We glued to these phones. I don't care where you go. You see little kids, teenage kids, young adults, adults, old people, senior citizens, 100 years old. Everybody got a phone in their hand, man, and everybody tripping. Got a phone in their hand. Oh, man, we glued to these electronics, man. We are glued to these electronics, and uh, I don't see no way around it, man. I had to uh, basically order another computer. I had to order another computer, man, because, <sighs> well, I ain't going to get into all that. But anyway, I had some, uh, this news here about one of, one of my favorite singers, uh, Roberta Flack. Turns out Roberta Flack is battling with uh, ALS and it's stopping her from uh, being able to sing. It's taking her ability to sing. Flack's management team announced that that 85 year old is battling AL, uh, ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease According and and the nervous system disease has made it impossible to sing and not easy to speak. Wow, Miss Flack plans to stay active in her musical and creative pursuits, and the release continues uh, continues her fortitude and joyful embrace of music that lifted her from the modest circumstances to an international spotlight. Remain vibrant and inspired. The North Carolina native has won four Grammy awards as well as the Lifetime Achievement Prize in 2020. She was best known for a 1973 album, Killing Me Softly, and the album is a uh, title track, Killing Me Softly, with his song, won this uh, Grammy in 1974 for Record of the Year. Anyway, ALS is a progressive disease that causes, uh, nerve, it causes the nerve cells, nerve cells to break down, reducing, reducing muscle function there is currently no cure. Flack, who was diagnosed with the disease in August, doesn't plan to let it slow her down ahead of the 50th anniversary of Killing Me Softly. Roberta, a documentary about Flack's life, is set to premiere next week, and the singer has plans to publish the children's book, The Green Piano. Wow. How Little Me Found Music, and that's supposed to be released in January coming up. I have a long, and she stated, I have a long dream of telling my story to children about the first green piano that my father got me from, from the junkyard and hoped that they would be inspired to reach for their dreams. She stated in the statement, I want them to know that dreams can come true with persistence, encouragement from family and friends, and most of all, belief in yourself. And uh, we all are praying for Roberta Flack. Wow, man. This, you know, it really hurts to hear that she has the same disease as Lou Gehrig had, ALS. And, uh, wow. So, and I had no idea. It was absolutely, positively no cure for that. No cure for ALS, man. So, I don't know, man. It's, it's like they, the medical people, man, are not really trying to find, find too many cures these days. It's no, I guess it's no money in cures. Okay, uh, on to the next story. Everybody say a prayer for Roberta Flack. On to the next story. After more than 35 years in prison, Matula Shakur, Tupac Shakur's stepfather, will be released on parole on December 16th when he'll uh, spend what are expected to be his final days among family and friends. And U.S. Parole Commission in October granted a request to release Shakur an activist and holistic health care advocate, now 72 years old, according to court documents obtained, the decision to grant parole was made public on uh, last Thursday. 
and Shakur has several health issues, uh, most notably stage three multiple uh, myeloma, a blood cancer that can affect the bones and kidneys. He is being held at a federal medical center in Lexington, a prison in Kentucky for incarcerated people who require care. There are a lot of tears of joys. Uh, Jomo Muhammad, an organizer with the Malcolm X grassroots movement who has been working to free Shakur said of the decision, there is still belief, disbelief, because we are setting ourselves for another denial. Now, folks are excited about being able to reunite with Matula, with his family, and we're crying together. It's, it's a long time overdue. Shakur has been incarcerated for decades, stemming from a 1988 conviction for leading a group of revolutionaries in a string of armed robberies in New York and Connecticut, including one that left three people deceased and supporters consider him to be a political prisoner, arguing that authorities wanted to make an example out of him because of his activism. Shakur has been denied release several times over the years, with authorities insisting that his crimes were too serious and his health had not deteriorated enough to warrant release. However, in the October decision, commission officials uh, told Secure, we now find your medical condition renders you uh, so infirm of mind and body that you are no longer physically capable of committing any federal, state, or local crimes. So organizers have advocated for Shakur's compassionate release, urging authorities to allow him to spend his final days with family rather than in a Kentucky medical prison. Shakur has endured drastic weight loss due to his illness and uh, treatments and has COVID at had COVID at least twice and has relied on IV feeding tubes on, on and off since May. And his attorney, Brad Thompson, said uh, the doctors of the Federal Bureau of Prisons gave Shakur in May less than six months to live, noting that his cancer treatment had stopped working. After being released on parole, Shakur would be mentioned for up to, uh, monitored for up to four months. Mama said he is glad that Shakur is still alive and his supporters and family are working to secure uh, the best medical care for him. So that's Tupac's stepfather is getting out of prison, getting out of prison. And uh, so I'm telling you, man, so here, here we go with a situation where you had uh, next story here. We got Danielle Truitt is currently one of the stars of Law & Order Organized Crime on NBC over the past few years, she has been a rising star in the game. 2016, her pilot with John Singleton, Rebel, was given the green light on BET. During that uh, span of time, Truett spoke to Hip Hop Vibe about, uh, about the show. However, the series would end up only lasting a couple of seasons. After that, Truett landed her feet on Law & Order. Now she is sharing the controversial moment. Danielle Truett is not only a popular actress, she is also a talented artist. Uh, before she was landing regular TV roles, she was on YouTube displaying her talents. Along the way, Truett has also had the opportunity to see different parts of the world. During one of her stage plays, Truett was in Memphis. She starred in The Mountaintop, which is a Martin Luther King Jr. inspired play. To this day, the injustices that Dr. King fought to bring to an end to uh, and to an end continue. So Danielle Truett was recently on a JetBlue flight, and this is where the story comes in, where she wound up in a tough situation. Despite being a television star, Truett had to contend with being discriminated against. While she was on the flight, Truett detailed a uh, white man disrespecting her with Truett being out of her seat, she said a white man told her to get back to her cage. As a result, she cursed the man that out. After that, Jet, Jet Blue wrote Truett a personal letter that thanked her for standing up for herself. Monel, uh, Daniel uh, Truett curses out the racist white man. He cursed out the racist white man on Jet Blue. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, the people from Jet Blue. Uh, you know, they're just saying, you know, thank you very, very much 
So, you know, hey, you, you know, it's, it's what you got to do, man. You just got to let them know that you're just not going to accept all this foolishness and all this nonsense. And, it, you know, every day you turn on the TV and you see some crazy clan, uh, Karen out there doing something stupid. And then now you got these kins out here and it seems as though they're attacking. They're mostly attacking black women because they know that if they come try the foolishness with black men, it's not going to work. Uh, but, you know, hey, man, if there's any guys around, if you any guys around and you see this stuff happening, you know, it's time for you to uh, step up and try to do what you can to defend these women in these situations, man. And, and and women stop taking this abuse from from these uh these Karens and Kens out here I mean if you want to fight you know if you want to fight black guys dog on it you better start fighting them start fighting that you know stand up for yourselves and fight that when them Karen and Kens start approaching you with that madness you don't want to see another video of a, a black woman uh, uh, stop, stop. You wouldn't do that if the shoe was on the other foot and if it was somebody else that was black that was attacking you. So stop the nonsense. Stop it. Stand up for yourselves when it comes to dealing with those Karens and Kens out there. Okay. I don't want to, I don't want to waste too much time on this, this story right here. It's about, you know, a lot, it's been a long time standing call for U.S. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas to face impeachment proceedings was renewed Monday after the right-wing judge indicated in an unsigned dissent that he would have blocked enforcement of the House January 6th panel subpoena for the communication records of Arizona Republican Party Chair Kelly Ward. The House Committee investigating the deadly January 6th insurrection is seeking Ward's records related to her role in former D.C. Dunst Trump's efforts to steal the 2020 election as a fake elector casting ballots in the Electoral College for Trump. In a 7-2 vote, the Supreme Court on Monday paved the way for the panel to obtain Ward's phone records, rejecting the Arizona GOP uh, chair's repeal. Right-wing Justice Samuel Alito uh, joined Thomas in dissenting. This marked the second time Thomas had tried to hinder the committee's probe into the Trump-led effort to uh, remain in office during the, despite his 2020 election loss. Uh, the pilot the, and the plot in which Thomas's wife, right-wing activist Jenny Thomas, played a major role. So it's time for Clarence Thomas to go, man. Time for him to go. And all you know, you, you shouldn't be allowed and somebody somebody has to be in charge of the Supreme Court. The head the head judge over there should be telling you no, no, you cannot be involved in these in, in any kind of issues that's in, that involves your wife. You cannot you have to recuse yourself. And I'm really about sick of him. And uh I'm sick I'm mad at myself for even wasting that much time even talking about it. Anyway, I'm gonna cut it short right here. I done got all worked up. You know who it is? You know who it is. KP's video. KP's news, video. News, KP's video. News, hit the like y'all. button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. That's right, folks. Hit the like button. It's KP's video. KP's video. News, news, y'all. It's KP's Peace. video. News.